We need your help for a merch design for our fall tour. Send your ideas and we'll choose one lucky winner for the Max Bemis design. Winner will receive two tickets to the show of their choice and 10 copies of the tea. Email designs to say anything merch contest at gmail.com. Deadline is August 23rd. Design a shirt for us. Submit your design to turnovermerch at gmail.com by May 20th. One design will be chosen for a merch item, and all proceeds will be donated to a food bank. <sighs> After 30 years in the biz, we thought it might be fun to give the fat logo a little makeover. So whether you're a kindergarten level finger painter or modern day Michelangelo, break out your crayons, magic markers, spray paint, etc. and take a stab at creating a reimagined version of our classic crest. We'll be sharing all the ones we like on our Instagram over the coming weeks. We'll also do a limited run t-shirt with the logo that we deem to be the ultimate masterpiece. And throw in $100 fat gift card, yada yada yada. Oh my god, what bullshit is happening? <laughs> Hello, let's talk about punk, the music industry, and record labels. Whee! <laughs> So, look guys, here's the deal. I read excerpts from Turnover Merch, or Turnover, whatever the fuck, I've never heard of them, uh, Say Anything, I assume, another label, and Fat Records, which I'm more versed in. I get these three um, labels and their little design contests. I got them all from Youth Energy on Instagram, uh, here, let me pull up his full-on Youth X Energy on Instagram, really great, uh, artist, merch guy, who, uh, actually exudes punk ethics and calls people out on this bullshit, and that's what it precisely is, bullshit, and so, if you haven't really got it, basically, these three punk labels or punk merch stores again i don't really know anything about say anything or turnover merch i'm well more versed in fat wreck and all that shit but they are doing merch design contest over this quarantine corona season and you may think initially well what's the problem you know it's just a merch design contest like what's the deal with that what's not punk about that you're being a little bullshit whiny gatekeeper <laughs> i don't even know what you're thinking in your head but let me let me just break this down for you okay and i don't know how long this is gonna get i don't know if i'm gonna ramble i don't know how many tangents there's gonna be because again don't know that much about saying anything don't know that much about turnover merch, but I know way too much about fat and fat Mike, so I could get into a lot of stuff there. Who knows? But let's just see where it takes us. Um, I'm going to start by explaining the bullshit in a merch designing contest, especially when it's rigged up like this. And I, I'm going to start with an example. 35 years ago, Fat Rec Chords was started up by Fat Mike of NoFX. If you've never heard of them, Google NoFX, Google Fat Mike, Google Fat Rec Chords, basically, um, along with uh, Bad Religion and Epitaph, uh, the one of the grandfathers of skate punk. Um, modern skate punk, I guess. I, I know JFA is really the grandfather of skate punk and yada yada, but you know what I mean. Like, Modern, classic, 90s, skate punk, and the continuation of that into the scene in 2020 was started by Epitaph, Bad Religion, No Effects, Fat Records, that kind of whole scene. So if you don't know about that, just do a quick Google search, uh, listen to some music, listen to a Punk and Drublick or something like that, and you'll get a really uh, nice sense of things. But basically, 35 years ago, Fat Records started up in Fat Mike's basement or whatever as a really small 
DIY record label. And even at that time, Epitaph was still a really small DIY record label run by Greg Graffin, if I remember correctly. Greg runs Epitaph, maybe? I don't know. What, maybe not Graffin. Maybe there's another Greg, but... <sighs> okay. So we started up 35 years ago. And Fat Mike supposedly called or telegrammed or what the fuck ever Dan Seitz, who is a local legend, especially in the California punk scene, as a really um, amazing artist. Uh, you could see his work in uh, uh, some of the Nardcore bands. Back in the 80s, specifically with RKL, I believe his most prominent work with them was, uh, I don't know if he drew up the first iteration of the Beanie Boy, but he definitely did Return to Slimy Valley, and, uh, not Return to Slimy Valley, it's a beautiful feeling, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know, I should have really pulled some shit up right here, but basically, TLDR for you folks, Dan Seitz is an artistic design legend in the California punk scene. So Fat Mike, obviously, starting this new label, calls up Dan Seitz and presumably goes, hey, can you design a logo for us? And so Dan Seitz designed a logo, which became the world-recognized, renowned Fat Rec logo that has been with the company for 35 whole years now. And this was a commission by Fat Mike where Dan Seitz got paid $50 to design the logo. And that's it. We have a quote from Dan on Instagram. He says, I think I got paid $50 to design that logo, the normal Fat Rec logo. I've seen it all over the fucking world for 30 years, which is pretty awesome. Thank you and congrats. If you can't pick up on the tones of sarcasm and irony in that sense, and if you don't know how money or fair treatment works, basically Dan got screwed. Because for $50, Fat Mike has been able to use his artwork forever and take it around the world, which is cool and is nice to see see your own art be taken around the world and all that but whenever your art is being put on every single piece of merch every single album release basically every single monetizable thing a company has done for the last 35 years a company who is very financially stable until about the late 2000s but has still been able to run and release music and still make a decent enough profit to make Fat Mike a rich old pig, <laughs> you kind of think, well, I should have gotten more compensation for this. But the nature of a commission is that it's initial payment, and then the person who asks for the commission gets to use that art as much as they want and in any sense of the as they want. It's basically a small fee for someone to make something that you now own, not the creator. And I understand that that whole commission thing is how it naturally goes and how it goes elsewhere, but it's kind of fucked up in the punk scene. And it gets me, that example gets to me to where we're at now. Because Fat Rec is essentially asking for people to do nearly free commissions. I mean, what Fat is specifically doing and what these other labels that I talked about say anything and turn over merch are doing are doing basically commission challenges. Hey, all you artists spend a lot of time and energy making a really sick logo. We're going to pick one of them. Fuck all of you other artists who spent all your time and energy trying to make a logo. 
there's only going to be one guy who gets it. And I know that's just, like, kind of the nature of competition, but it is kind of like, you screw these people out of their time, you know? If they really thought they had something good going now, and it's not like they could put that on their own website or put that on their own merch or something like that or monetize that work they made because you are totally going to sue them for using the Fat Records name and using a variation of their logo. So yeah, it is kind of in a sense screwing all those artists who don't get picked as the one who wins the competition. But you're also screwing the winner of the competition. And it's not in such a major way as Dan Sites, but it's still enough to piss me off. And I hope it pisses you guys off too. And I hope you realize the bullshit of this. Because they are... Here's the fine reading of it. We'll do a limited run t-shirt with the logo that we deem to be the best. So the winner gets a limited run t-shirt with their logo on it how exciting how cool my own artwork on fat mike's amazing legendary record label on t-shirts so everyone could buy them oh my gosh i'm gonna be famous i'm gonna make so much money i'm gonna be rich and famous and everyone's gonna love me except no because they never talk about royalties they never talk about even giving you one of the shirts that you designed. They said, we're going to take your logo that you made for us. We are going to put it on a t-shirt, do a small run of those t-shirts, and then we're not going to give you any of the profits from that t-shirt. We're going to keep all the profits from that t-shirt to ourselves, which is way more than what fat is actually giving the winner because what fat is giving the winner is a $100 gift card and do you want to guess where that $100 gift card is to it's to the fat rec online store that means that you can only spend that gift card at fat records digital store you could only use it to buy fat rec merch and it's only $100 Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. I've... <laughs> I've groomed my dogs and trimmed shit out of their fur for almost the price that these people get. One of these people, again, everyone else who spent all their time and energy thinking they made an amazing logo... Fuck you. You can't even use it anywhere else because they're going to sue you. So that's just time and energy wasted. Put it in a portfolio, but you can't make money out of that. And right now, especially because it's quarantine and corona, and you're a young, striving artist who hasn't really made it big enough, who is now working on these, <laughs> these contests to try to make a name for yourself, you really need that money right now. And the winner needs this money too. That's if they pick a small-time artist, because they may just pick a big-time artist and screw every small-time artist who thought this was their chance to be popular, get a little bit of a boost from Fat Wreck, and get some money to help get them past the season. But no, because you know what? You can't pay your water bills with a $100 gift card and a thank you. And you can't pay your water bill with your logo and your artwork being put on someone else's shirt that none of the royalties are going to go to you. And you especially can't pay your water bills if you don't even get picked, but you still spend all your time, well not all your time, a lot of your time and energy working on this design. Time and energy you could have spent elsewhere working on designs that you personally hold the right to that you can monetize and make money off by yourself it's absolute bullshit and i know i know that's how commissions work okay i know that's the nature of commissions but commissions as they normally are in the punk rock world and even in any fair logical compassionate world should not exist, especially when it comes to small-time struggling creators because they need that money and they need that money more than they need any exposure. I'll give it to you like this. For this radio show, we are soon going to have a new animated intro animated by my dear friend 
I don't know uh, if I should call him by his stage name or whatever. I'm just going to call him Noah. I won't give his last name by my dear friend Noah. You could find him on Instagram at Entrica Z. I'm pretty sure I'll have him linked somewhere. And I am giving him, I'm commission, it's basically a commission. I am giving him $40 to animate a 10 second intro for the podcast radio show, the show you're listening to right now, obviously. But it doesn't stop there because if slash when this show gets monetized or if there is any money that comes out of the videos that his animated intro is on, I am going to pay him. Now, the percentage isn't worked out so far because as of yet, this isn't monetized. In fact, most of the label, <laughs> the I, I could talk, I'll, I'll get into it later about how the money side of our label works. But as of right now, this show, no money is going through it. But at the time that money is going through it, money is going to definitely go to Noah because his animated work is being on a video that is monetized and it's not fair for me to just pay him 40 bucks and say, that's it, it's fine. No, because if I'm making money off of something that he's on, he deserves a cut of it. That's just fair. Especially, it's fair whenever it's a local very small DIY business who is having money problems as it is but it's even more fair when it's Fat Records one of the biggest punk labels ever they should definitely have no problem giving away 30 40 50 percent even 20 10 percent just some type of royalties to the person who is making these shirts who is making the design of these shirts who Otherwise, without his design, these shirts wouldn't be selling. Instead of just giving him a $100 Fat Wreck gift cards. Because trust me, if he was making royalties off of these shirts, he'd be making way more than $100. And you know that. And you should know that's bullshit. Because in punk, there's a thing called solidarity. And in a nice, compassionate, fair world, there's a thing called solidarity. And you know what that means? That means realizing that we're all stuck in the same bullshit. That is realizing your history and feeling empathy and compassion for people who are not high on the totem pole like you are. And that's the one thing that really gets me, is why can't these bigger people, these bigger labels, these bigger artists do anything to help out the smaller artists? Because these contests, these design contests, royalties and money aside, the design contests are not going to do anything to boost the resume, portfolio, or just overall audience or interest in any of these artists. It's really not. I mean, they are putting some of the designs on their Instagram, but that's only going to get you a few more followers, and really that doesn't amount to jack shit, you know? Instead, they could be like, wow, here's at blah, 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 and like talk about that and talk about their portfolio and stuff. Really give them a shining spotlight or at least make a list of people with their ads. Put it on a Google Drive so that people know and like have their designs connected so people know who made what and they have a nice thorough list of it. That would be fine enough if you also fix the monetizable issue because they really should be getting royalties from this. And it just, it, it irks me. It irks me. That, because I, I try, and Q really tries to, to shine a spotlight on the DIY underground bands and guys that we know and love that we want to support and help give a rub off to. Because, yeah... There's a decent amount of bands we know, a lot of bands we know in the DIY scene who are bigger and have more of a platform than us. But there is still smaller guys who only have like one release on Bandcamp or one release on SoundCloud who are really just starting out, but whose music and whose personality and who's just overall everything about their character and about their art is amazing and deserves for people to be known. 
and they're struggling right now. And I know what it's like to struggle. Because as we're at right now, we only have 288 followers on Instagram. And I know for some of you that may seem big, for some of you that may seem small. I think about half of the bands on our label have more followers and more of an audience than us, which is a weird dynamic. But it's not the hardest struggle, but it is still somewhat of a struggle to get an audience. And so I know what it's like to be even lower than that and to not be connected with other more popular artists, not to have like a Dairokin or someone connected to you, just to be on your own, not being spotlighted by anyone, only having like 20, 30 followers. I know what that's like and I want to help people out of the struggle. That's why in every YouTube video, I have the recommended like random check this band thing. And it's not always like some band that's bigger than us. Most of the time, I try to make it some really cool band I found with like no online presidents with like one release on Bandcamp because they need those eyeballs more on their stuff than everyone else does. Those really low tier struggling artists, like the bottom of the bottom of the DIY who are just trying to make it big, and especially the people who are trying to make a living and trying to like make money off of all of this they need it more than anything and that's what irks me about these contests because they are designed to use the people who are in that situation they are designed to use those people for their art and for their skills but not pay them for it it's using the disempowered it's using the disenfranchised probably use the word disenfranchised in the wrong sense. But you get what I mean. These contests are targeting those people, those people who are bottom of the barrel. And I, I see people hire people with more of a following and who have steady money rolling in. I see them submitting to these contests too, but it's not really them. It's the lower tier people who are being targeted. The people who have these talents and who have really great skills and artwork but aren't being found yet because they think this is their time to shine this is their time to make money off of this this is this is a light at the end of the tunnel but it's not and they're being duped and they're not going to get any monies off of those t-shirts they're only going to get one hundred dollars to a company that's making the t-shirts it's bullshit and it's not punk rock and I hope you guys all understand this. And I hope you know where I'm coming from. And just to be completely frank, I will spell out how we do business. Because I don't wanna I don't want you guys to assume we're hypocrites. Because I I, I know what it's like. I know there's a whole thing about business and the scene. And I know there's some thoughts that bubble in some people's heads when you say you're a label. People don't like labels, generally. Most, I, I know a decent amount of people in like the DIY punk scene who frown upon labels, even smaller labels, not just Fat Wreck and Epitaph and people like that, but small-time labels like me and others, like class and all that stuff small time labels people frown upon it just because of how they perceive a record label to be but we try to do what we think a record label should do and that is give everything we can to these bands our job as classed records is to do as much for these bands and for the fans, as we can. We are not solely focused on being our own entity. Yeah, we like to have the whole keep laughing and start your day. We like to have our own radio show. We, we like to have all of this kind of stuff, the logos and all of that. But all of that is very secondary and directed towards building up the bands and helping the bands as much as we can. 
and I'll give you an example of how we do that. The way we work monetarily, especially let's say a band comes to us and they're really chill and they have great music and they say, hey, we want to release 100 CDs. Once we have the budget to fund those 100 CDs, we fund all of it. We pay for the entire release, fully funded by us. We really try, we strive to make it so the bands don't have to pay anything. Bands just record the music and then we could fund the rest. They don't have to worry about shipping. They don't have to worry about the cost of printing out these CDs or handling them. That we strive to do all of that on our own because we know how challenging and taxing it can be especially the guys who are on the low tier of the podium to do that themselves, you know, and to make the CDs and releases look good. We pay entirely for the CDs. And then after that, all of the profits made from those CDs are split 50-50. Cuz we think that's the fairest option. And I know some people are going to be a gas and taking it back 50 50 oh my god like you, you it's not supposed to be 50 50 that's not fair it should be lower on your end and higher on the band's end and i understand that it's just there's two things one and this is not as important we pay for the entire cd release i know some people will think that's the most important thing but to me it's really not it's the second thing that's more important and the real reason why we do that 50 50 split is because None of the money, that none of that 50% that goes back to us is ever used for personal use. That is still the band's money and still everyone on the label's money. It's just we have it because all of that money just goes back into the pot for the next release. All of the money we make from everything goes back into our funds to be used for the next release. So let's say Dairokin wants to print out 300 CDs. We print out 300 CDs, sell them 10 bucks a pop, that's $3,000. Split that two ways, Dairokin gets 1500 we get 1500 That 1500 is then used to fund the next two or three releases that we have go coming up. It could fund a Unoya CD. It could fund a Stain CD. Who knows? Who cares? It's not like that 1500 is being used to buy us Taco Bell or whatever, or buy new comforters or video games or movies or an Xbox or whatever. No. All of the money we get goes right back to the bands because literally everything we do is for the bands or the fans it is either to entertain you guys the fans or it is to build up or entertain too because i know some uh, most of the guys on the label listen to this and they are entertained by it but we really try to build up and help out the bands as much as we can now there's a caveat to that we won't work with every single band we only work with people who we deem not assholes, who have cool music that we like. So basically, hey, uh, I guess this could kind of be turned into a pitch, although I'm kind of comfortable with the amount of bands we have on the label right now. But hey, if you are a new band, or even an old band, because like, look at Die Roken, they're in their double digits now. But if you are a band who is not full of assholes and who has cool music send a demo over to us send an album dm us a link email us classrecords at gmail.com like <laughs> hey i guess i might as well shoot that out there but that's yeah that's how we work everything we do we do to build up the bands you know and to build up their audience and to make more fans come to their shows and i'm really proud of the interview with dave because in the interview he talks about since 
coming on with us, things have started, like the ball has started rolling more. And I know that's not, I can't say that's entirely due to us. Like that, that is still due a lot to the band and to the Vero Beach scene and to the really nice people who support the Vero Beach scene and who are fans of Die Roken. But I know, like, we put their music on streaming. We promoted their music. We promote them to this day. We put them on our Halloween comp. We do interviews with them. We do cool shit with them. We promote their music videos. We do all of that jazz. And we do it with every single band because our goal and every single label's goal, I was going to say punk label, but every single label's goal, the goal of a record label is to be a tool for the bands. It is not for your personal gain. It is not to build your own personal audience unless that audience is being transferred over to the bands. A record label is a tool to make the bands that are good and have good people behind their great music. It is to make those people have a better living situation or at least just more money coming in to make things easier and to get them more exposure. That is your job as a label. And I don't know the inner workings of FAT. I can't say that they fail at that as a record label, but I could say in this one instance, with the design contest, they fail at that. And that's just the simple truth. And that's how I see it. You may see it in another way, but that is my takeaway from all of this. Now, I hope you guys appreciated this. I hope 30 minutes uninterrupted wasn't too much. And yeah, I will say this because I know some people are going to be like, oh, you hypocrite, you don't shout out. You don't shout out bands that aren't on your label enough. I will be, there will be a Google either drive or folder no, either a drive or doc, I meant to say, down in the YouTube description that has a pretty big list of bands that aren't on the label who may be very small time or maybe bigger than us, who I think you guys should support and check out, especially during the quarantine season when no one can play any shows. So anyways, let's throw it back to uh, the live radio show. Peace.